can get this to move. That's me. Farid is one of this year's students. Hopefully Sasha uh, will be joining us in uh, a while to talk. I thought it would be useful to have the opportunity to speak to people who are actually doing it um, and to give you an indication of what's involved. Here's a little bit of um, Strathclyde boasting, really. I think I can't say any other word for it, but some of the ways in which the university has uh, done well in the last few years. I don't think I'll say any more about that. Um, just some key facts, if you're not oh, Sorry to interrupt, with... Charlie, but um, yeah. I don't, the slides don't seem to be moving on. I don't know if you can see something different, Farid, but I can only see the title slide. Oh, yeah. yes, we've moved on. I, I'm seeing... Just the main slide. You're still just seeing the main slide. Yes. I'm going to stop sharing then. And uh, gosh, I'll tell you what I'll do. I will start again and I will share my screen again and we'll see if we can make this work. Um, you can tell me. Can you now see the display with slide number two on it? No, now I can't see. It just says. Charlie Irvin has started shading screen. It's just black. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Sometimes these know. things just happen. <laughs> and that, presumably, can you see anything now? No, I still can't. Can you see anything, Farad? Uh, no, the same. Uh, maybe another reboot is, uh, is needed. <laughs> uh, yes, that's um, probably... Uh, be an issue with Zoom and I, what I'll do is I will come out of PowerPoint. Well, let, let's assume first of all, so there's been some interesting uh, practical problem solving this year for those of us teaching over Zoom. And uh, so you'll see the logic of live problem solving. I'm gonna start by assuming it's PowerPoint. So I'm gonna reboot PowerPoint and see if I can get this recent. That's what I want, isn't it? There we go. Now, let me try screen sharing once again. And if it's not that, still the same, still a blank screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay, which suggests to me that I should log out of this webinar and log back in. Is that okay, Leah? Yes, I think that'll be fine, yes. Yeah, okay. Hello, Leah. Hello. Uh, Apologies to everyone then who's watching. Um, sometimes these things just happen, as I'm sure everyone can appreciate. Um, hello. They just happen. Here I am again. And if this doesn't work, Leah, maybe you could share the slides. I can try and share the slides, yes, absolutely. Okay, let me give it one more try. And uh, are you seeing slides now? Oh, that's better. Yes. That's better. You are? Yeah, that's it. Uh, well, let me go to slideshow. And are you now seeing the full screen? It's coming on. It's just loading, I think. Ah, do you think it's a sort of speed issue? Uh -huh. It's like it's stuck. It's like it's sort of like unfolding, but... But very slowly. But very slowly. Um, let me try and get the slides up just to. Okay. Well, I think I think. Back we... up. Um, if I hit my button again, is that? No, nope, you're still not seeing that. No, sorry. Okay. How odd! How odd! Um, right. Um, well, there we are. Oops, sorry, I'm just not something over. Right. Let me have a go and see if I can help, and I will do my very best to click on every time that I think that you're moving to the next slide. You can keep me right and just give me a shout if I've moved on too quick. Well, one, I was going to try one other thing. If I came out, yeah, of course. If I came out of slideshow um, and, you know, just used the slides because you were seeing them down. Are you seeing that now? Are you seeing them down the slide, the side? No, no I'm still getting the... Okay. Has started. It must be a... Internet speed problem then, or perhaps. Um, right, let me give it a go. There we go. 
Is that... Thank, you. Thank you, Leah. Let me see. Okay. okay. Excellent. Are you seeing that moving on? Yeah. Yes. That. So we've we've heard enough okay. about me. Um, we've done this slide, I think. Done that one. Yeah. Let's move here. On. Okay. Some useful facts. I was about to just explain that. In fact, what was founded in 1796 was the John Anderson the Institution, um, which was set up really to teach technology um, in the, the right at the start of the Industrial Revolution. So, so Strathclyde's had that technological history, and that's why its um, core identity, really, it, it likes to call itself the place of useful learning. That's been a good home for me as a mediator, because mediation is a practical subject. And so it's felt comfortable to be part of that. And you'll see that the rest of those are, are just about Strathclyde's recent efforts to be um, an effective, uh, successful university. Leah, that's probably enough on that one. Thank you. A little bit about location. And, and I feel this is slightly poignant for um, students like Farid, this year students, uh, I haven't met, we, we've done a whole year. I don't know what height they are um, because it's been entirely online. However, this is for Farid as much as the rest of you. When we reopen, and we do think the campus is going to reopen this autumn, it's a very, very central location. It's right in the middle of Glasgow. And uh, Glasgow has been one of these student cities that kind of sells itself. Uh, as, as my understanding, <laughs> I had, I've had uh, nieces and nephews and people from other parts of Scotland come to Glasgow to study uh, because they regard it as such a, a, a good place to be a student in. So I'll probably not say any more about that, but it, it's a big city um, and, and Strathclyde's right in the heart. And here's an illustration of part of the new campus development. It's developing all the time. Um, and I've actually not seen this in the flesh yet, but it should be open this autumn. And it's a new uh, learning and teaching hub. And we hope that some of our classes might be in there. It's going to be very swish and swanky. And you'll see there some of the nice hills. Strathclyde's built on hills. And so I like that, uh, but it, it can be challenging, especially if you're in a rush. Okay, Leah, shall we move on? And then... Um, so it's just some practicalities. Uh, the entry requirements are an honours degree, first or, or two one. Uh, we overseas equivalents may be somewhat different, so do please apply, uh, even if you're unsure, or get in touch if you're unsure about that. And there have uh, one or two people have applied with relevant professional experience and have been accepted and have thrived on the course. So again, get in touch if you've got any questions about that and you'll see the application deadline of the 31st of July. Thanks, Leo. Right, let's get into my programme. Um, so Leah, I think I've done this as a cunningly, um, it's all animated. So yeah, there are, if you pause there, so, the way it works with the Mediation Conflict Resolution Programme, there are three compulsory classes which uh, you have to take. Two of them are taught by me and are core parts of the mediation class. And the third one, Legal Research, is actually for all the masters in the law school. Everybody has to do that in order to do their dissertation. Theory and Principles of Conflict Resolution, as it says on the tin, that's the theoretical underpinning. It's, it's all the ideas behind mediation. It's multidisciplinary. Um, although we're located in a law school, mediation is not simply a law subject. And we draw on psychology. We draw on quite a lot of uh, sociologists and anthropologists have studied mediation. Um, there, there are cultural issues and a whole range of approaches, I suppose, from the therapies, um, not to mention law. And so it's, it's quite a broad sweep. That class is designed to go hand in hand with mediation and practice. That's the practical class. Um, that's, and in that, you are actually doing mediating. You're learning by doing. 
And that's a very key idea in my particular programme. And then finally, legal research, as I said, that's the preparation for dissertation covers a very broad sweep of methods for studying and producing a, a large piece of work at the end of your master's. Thanks, Leah, if you go on to the electives. Now, in order to get a master's um, at Strathclyde, you have to have 120 credits and each of these classes gets you 20. So one way of doing it would be to do everything from my program and th there are three electives. You can also choose electives from other parts of the law school, indeed other parts of the faculty. And I know each year I have students who will have a go at uh, human rights as a popular one. So there, there's some overlap there. And I should also say that negotiation, which is one of my electives, is chosen by a lot of students from other classes. We, we had uh, 30 in the class this year, people from construction and from international um, trade uh, law got, got involved in that one. So negotiation, it, it's a foundational, absolutely foundational class not only for mediators, I think for anyone who's going to be a professional in life. Um, the, another elective, employment mediation, as again, that's fairly obvious from the title, it's focused very much on mediation in the context of workplace and employment disputes. That's partly because that's a thriving part of the, of the mediation profession in Scotland. Um, and that has quite a practical bent, but it also has a foundation in employment law and regulation. And then finally, conflict resolution and the state. I think that's where we, we really put our critical hats on. And we look at the ways in which the state has used mediation and mediation methods, excuse my dog, um, to advance its own interests. Um, and then we think, we also think very critically about mediation and approach it as you would expect in an academic institution. It's not just about peddling how good mediation is. I think we want to be able to thinking analytically and critically about the, the activity. That's what you would expect from master students. So that's the, um, that's the outline of what's on offer from this particular program. Leah, if you want to flick on, the, the actual teaching, I know that students are often concerned about this. So there are three uh, different formats for the, for, for the teaching. Two of them, theory and principles of conflict resolution and conflict resolution and the state are, I suppose what you would regard as quite a traditional university format. Every Monday for theory and principles and every Wednesday um, it's it's a twilight class in the winter time. It's twilight four till six um, every Monday and every Wednesday for ten weeks in a row. This year, of course, the, the year that's just passed, it was done entirely online through Zoom, and that was an interesting learning challenge. And you can maybe ask uh, Farid and Sasha later how that was for them as consumers. Um, it has certainly got some convenience to it. You don't have to be in Glasgow. The, the mediation in practice, as I said, is entirely practical. We use two intensive weekends, and the idea is to throw you in, not quite at the deep end, to ease you in to the role of mediator via a range of scenarios and situations based on real cases and you're supported by tutors throughout. Uh, there were three tutors this year and we worked very closely with the students and we gradually worked our way through real cases uh, so that by the end of them, every student had had an experience of running a mediation, being part of a mediation. We often work in uh, co-mediation, it's an interesting hybrid where you work with a colleague and there are two mediators. And that's something that's, that's interesting. You can learn from other people's styles. You learn from the tutors, you learn from each other, and you learn from your own experience. And then finally, uh, the negotiation and employment mediation classes are hybrids. So there are five seminars, one every fortnight. And that, again, is a Monday for negotiation and a Wednesday for employment mediation. 
and then one intensive weekend to put the learning into practice. So thank you, Leah. That's that's the structure, and we'll take questions uh, in, in, in a while. I want to say a little bit about assessment. Um, there's quite because it's a practical subject. It's something that I have wrestled with. That you you want to be doing it. You want to be getting on with it. And how to assess something practical is always a challenge. One way we do this is we ask the students to write reflectively, and that's a key part of mediation and practice and the, the electives that have a practical element to them. We're asking you to write about your own experience of doing the thing and your own experience of learning. And I think there's good evidence that reflective writing will lead to reflective practitioners. And it's one of the aspirations for a profession like mediation that we have practitioners who are thoughtful, who are self-critical, but who also celebrate what they do well, who can build on what they do well to get better. Um, so reflective writing is right in there from the, the very beginning, actually. The very first two exercises involve you writing reflectively about your own experience. We also use an, an observation of a case. This is a fairly recent innovation for the class. I think it's been really useful. Again, I'd, I'd like to hear Sasha and Farid's um, point of view on that. But for me, the sooner we can get students watching real mediations, the better. And we now have a quite a established mediation clinic where our students and many alumni and other volunteers are providing a free mediation service for local courts. So these are actual cases. These are real cases with real people. And as soon as we can, we ask the students to observe uh, clinic mediation and write about it. Another um, kind of practical variant that we, we, it's called stone soup because I borrowed it from a friend of mine in America. Um, but the idea of a stone soup interview is essentially, it's like a big mixture of ideas. And what uh, the students are asked to do is to interview an experienced mediator about a recent case. And then they have to write a case report. And I've learned and this has been really positive, it, not only because it's given another glimpse of real life practice, I think also because it introduces students to practitioners um, and gives students, a, I suppose, a, a glimpse of the kind of people who mediate and the kind of skills that are necessary and the challenges of being a mediation practitioner in, uh, well, in the UK at, at the moment, although there's nothing with Zoom to stop people interviewing uh, folk in other parts of the world. Um, traditional academic assignments, of course, we have them. You won't be surprised to hear that there are essays of varying length. They tend to be around about 3,000 words. They're not monumentally long, some are three and a half. And there, we, as you would expect, we, we expect people to think analytically about a subject, to marshal their reading and to demonstrate that they have read and understood and are able to critique what's being taught to them. And then finally, there's also um, observation of students by tutors on the intensive weekends where you'll get feedback. You get feedback on the spot, and then you get um, what we call summative feedback at the end of the weekend and, and a mark for that, which forms part of the total mark. So your performance, if you like, as a, as a learner mediator is also taken into account. It's not the whole mark, but it is part of it. And it, that creates an incentive, I suppose, to, to do as well as you can. Okay, thanks, Leah. Oh, <laughs> the dissertation. Don't need to go back. We'll, we'll come on to the dissertation. I, I want to say a little bit about it. And I'm, I'm conscious of time. So um, I just want to say a little bit more about the mediation clinic. The idea actually came from students in the very first year of the class. I, I remember doing the role plays on the intensive weekend. And students were saying, this is really interesting, but I'd love to do it for real. Uh, when can we get, how do we get experience? How do we get, how do we get involved in real cases? And 
From that came the idea that, well, what we could do is we could offer a free service. As long as we had an experienced mediator working alongside a student, I would have little concern um, using that co-mediation model about exposing real people with real cases to learners, because the learners would be working in an environment that's carefully <coughs> for them to, to be learning as they go. And from that, the, the, there's been a bit of a history to the clinic, but we now uh, provide mediation for almost half the sheriff courts in Scotland. That's thanks to the pandemic via Zoom. We are providing mediation in really quite a large chunk of Scotland, particularly Glasgow, of course, which is the largest and busiest court in the country, um, but, but all over West Central Scotland. And that last year, I off the top of my head, we mediated somewhere between 70 and 80 cases across the year. So there's more than a couple, say probably two or three a week going on. Um, so that provides a lot of opportunities for students. Um, I, I allow students to observe from the minute they start, and I then authorize people to start acting as a co-mediator, as a student mediator, as soon as they've passed the mediation in practice class, which is first semester. So that's by the Christmas holidays of the first semester, you should be eligible to take part as a student mediator. Um, and there's nothing like that. that. That's undoubtedly the best way to get your feet under the table and to have a sense of what this craft is like in, in the world, in the real world. Okay, Leah, thank you. I'll take a swig of my coffee. The dissertation. Well, Sasha and uh, Farid are both wrestling with this right as we speak. It's a 15,000 word piece of work. Um, my thinking has always been that I want the dissertation to be something that you will find of value for the rest of your career. It's a, it's a rare opportunity to set aside four months of your life to do very little, I hope, if you're, if you're lucky enough to have time, but read and think and write and reflect. Um, and it's certainly been my own experience. I did a master's myself about 15 years ago. I found it, I found it hard, but I found it incredibly enriching to, to push myself. Um, we ask for the dissertation proposal as part of the legal research class in March. And it's good to be thinking from as soon as you start, what, what's, what's sparking my imagination? What's making me uh, want to get up in the morning and do, do my studies here? Um, topic of your choosing, and I've listed at the bottom there, these are this year's topics. Hello, uh, Sasha's just joined us, and I'm going to turn to Sasha and Farid in a moment. So, so here is a sample of the topics, just randomly, I mean, every year, there might be some years we would maybe have eight, some years we have 10 or 12 people doing the dissertation. Um, power in mediation, um, that, that's actually Farid's topic, and maybe we'll, we can ask him more about it. Ad ASN, it stands for Additional Support Needs, and that's the Scottish term for special educational needs. So it turns out that there's a statute in Scotland that uh, says local authorities have to offer mediation for disputes between parents and local authorities. And so one of uh, this year's students is looking at that particular area of practice. Another student, and I'm really pleased about this, is going to analyze the mediator reflection forms that we use in the mediation clinic. So every time anybody does a mediation in the clinic, they write about it. That's part of the commitment to reflective practice. And uh, one of this year's students called Frank is going to take a, a, an anonymized random sample of those forms and he's going to analyze what the mediators say in response to two questions. One is what did you do well and one is what, what didn't work so well. So it's going to give us a really interesting glimpse of what the mediators think about their own practice. Um, so I'm, I'm pleased about that. And it's going to, I think, enrich our understanding of what's going on in mediation. There's one on procedural justice in workplace mediation and another 
on workplace mediation and COVID-19. And that's been very much about what, what happens when we're working via Zoom or Teams or whatever me method we use. There are, there are pluses and minuses, as we've learned today, to working in the online environment. Then we have one of this year's students who's actually already a professional um, business coach is applying coaching to mediation. So there you can see somebody who's drawing on their own existing experience and applying that to the mediation world and trying to build something that will, I think will help him in the future. And then finally, one of, one of my um, students this year comes, has a background in West Africa, is it Gabon, I think? And it is really interested in what my mediation offer in an environment where there's severe distrust between government and citizens, and maybe looking at some of the peace and reconciliation models that have been used in, in other African states. So there you have a sweep of this year's dissertations, and I think that gives you an idea of the sort of things that uh, are fueling people's imagination. Okay, Leah, we're, we're nearly done with the presentation. Just uh, one or two final slides. Here's one of our graduates from a couple of years ago. Joe, after graduating, she volunteered. She volunteered for the clinic. She also volunteered for the Cyrenians um, mediation and support team, and then was, a, was able to apply for a, a job, a three-year um, post that they had going and got it. And in fact, uh, I know that three, I think, of my alumni are now working for that Cyrenians mediation and support team. And, and it, so it's good to know that, that I, I think people who've done the masters are well placed to go for the mediation jobs that there are. Um, it's still quite a new profession and some people are having to carve out um, self-employment building on what they already do and blending mediation into that. Uh, and I can maybe take more Q and A's on that, but that's, that's Joe. Uh, thanks, Leah. Um, I'm not hugely expert on this. So just, we just maybe quickly need to touch on it that uh, Scottish students, if you haven't already drawn down a SAS um, loan, for postgraduate study, you should be eligible for a loan for one, one full-time year um, or two part-time years. So that's, that's one funding option for Scottish students. Then anyone who has been at Strathclyde, um, if you're going to study full-time, can apply for an alumni scholarship. And that's a, a reasonably decent um, grant, I suppose, a subsidy towards your, your fees. Um, the Dean's International Excellence Award, would you would apply for that award and that it, it's a competitive um, application, um, but you can see again, it's, it's really quite a substantial um, scholarship. I'm not sure that my class is eligible for that. Um, this year, we have brought in an EU transition scholarship. So anyone who's um, coming from the European Union where would, would have been eligible for a much reduced fee in previous years, no longer are. So there's a scholarship to try and offset that, that you could apply for. Thanks, Leah. Um, I think that's a little advert for Leah. <laughs> so if you have any questions about recruitment and admissions, then do please email and uh, you, they'll get back to you as quick as they can. And finally, I think that's, that's the end of the presentation. Thanks very much, Leah. That was almost as, as slick as if we hadn't had a, um, a Zoom disaster. Um, Apologies about some of the aims <laughs> going too early. <laughs> okay. So um, welcome, Sasha. Nice to see you. What, what I'm going to do, Farid has been sitting patiently, so I'm going to start with him. I, I'm, I'm going to, before we open for q and I'm going to ask each of uh, this year's students, and they both have very different experiences, I think, and come from different places, um, three, three simple questions, um, but they're also available for Q&A. So, so Farid, if I could start with you, because you've been waiting patiently. Um, the first question really was, what drew you 
to studying the Masters in Mediation and Conflict Resolution at Strathclyde. Yeah, thank you, Charlie. I really enjoyed this uh, this recap, actually. Um, um, I have always wanted to do this course, actually. I'm a, as you can see, a mature student, so probably later stages of my career. But this course has been on my list for probably the past 15 years. Um, I have a legal background. I studied law. I studied linguistics. Um, I'm a professional interpreter as well. And um, um, conflict resolution uh, and, and, and mediation um, has always been my target because I felt that would be um, a good, uh, probably, uh, end to um, my career and the combination of the various skills I've acquired over the years. Um, and at the end of the day, um, conflict resolutions is, is in our uh, daily life. Um, and uh, I wanted to um, combine all the skills I've acquired um, into uh, providing a service that will help towards that goal, which is basically mediate and uh, 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 solve, solve problems. Um, this course um, attracted me, uh, and this university, this particular university, attracted me after doing my, 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 my research. Um, it came up actually as the, one of the top uh, providers for, for this particular course. Um, I'm based in England, uh, although it was Strathclyde initially, and before COVID, I was prepared to travel. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, COVID actually gave me the opportunity to combine my work as a linguist and uh, doing this course at the same time. And uh, the way it was run, the way it was prepared was, was, was excellent. I cannot fault it with all the challenges uh, that we faced. Um, also, what has attracted me to the course is, is, uh, is the, uh, uh, the leader of the course, which is yourself, Charlie. I mean, you are one of the scholars and uh, um, you look up um, anything to do with mediation and your name comes up, uh, either as a writer or as a critique. And uh, um, it, we're very lucky, actually, to, to, to have you on board. Uh, and uh, I, I can... Um, vouch that we, 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 we've learned a lot from you this year and we continue uh, to learn. Obviously, we are at later stages of, uh, of uh, dissertation. Um, yes. All right. Well, Farid, uh, it maybe it, I've got two other questions then. And thank you. Thank you for that answer. I, maybe I'll start with the. Yeah, let, let's do this in reverse, seeing as how you, you have been quite positive. What, what's been the most challenging? What would be the most challenging thing about doing doing the course? It'd be useful no, uh, for the students to know this. Yes, um, I, I have been out of academia for a long time, uh, for three decades, actually. Um, the course in itself is so exciting, is so um, um, uh, tough, provoking. Um, we have an excellent, um, I have an excellent rapport with other colleagues and you can see, um, you know, in the classes, uh, we interact, we um, communicate well, we analyze, we meet actually outside the course on Zoom. We have our own meetings, not secret meeting, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> good yes, yes we, we learn from each other. Uh, we learn from each other. Um, for me, it, it has been positive, and lockdown has been positive. The, the only thing I would say, the challenge was, uh, was the break at Christmas, because uh, we, we, uh, it was so intense, so the adrenaline was kicking, we were enjoying the course, essays, and so on. And then we had this break, uh, which lasted probably four or five weeks. Mm -hmm. So um, to go back to semester two was quite a little bit challenging, you know, to uh, to actually resume with the same intensity and the same enthusiasm and challenge. And then we got going. And we missed the, the weekly, um, uh, uh, um, the weekly lessons, um, uh, uh, lectures, uh, because some of them was uh, uh, scattered over two weeks. Yeah. Um, 
So uh, comparing with semester one, yes, Se semester two was a bit challenging on okay. that front. Yes. And, and just finally, what, what was the best thing then from your point of view? What was the best thing having done yeah. it or having done at least most of the year? Yeah. Um, the, the course um, gives you, especially the, the, the mediation practice module, the mediation clinic, not only the course uh, tells you and shows you and teaches you what mediation is, what conflict resolution is, the various styles, um, the scholar uh, work uh, over the years, the um, thought provoking module like uh, mediation and the state, which, uh, which is more uh, sort of a critical module. Um, um, the course teaches you actually in practice uh, uh, how to mediate. Um, we had um, two excellent intensive weekends, we had a good laugh, and believe me, we, we looked forward to it and we, we could have done with uh, more weekends like that. We had a good laugh and uh, it was good feedback, it was honest, and uh, we learned from it. I've, I've, I've become, I'm becoming more uh, and more confident, I'm a better mediator, I have uh, um, under my belt uh, some successful mediations, mediations already and the, co the, the course sets you in good stead for the future for um, it makes you a better individual, a more confident individual uh, to tackle anything that you face in your, um, in your life and in your workplace, wherever you are. Um, it, as Charlie said, um, it has a I mean, it benefits you socially, psychologically, um, ethically, makes you think, uh, teach you life skills, I would say. Okay, well, look, thank you very much, Farid. That's, that's fantastic. I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, if it's okay, we'll, we'll turn to Sasha. Um, who, I guess, Sasha, would be fair to say, uh, coming to this at a different stage in life, um, from, from Farid. So can I ask you the same um, three questions, just from your own point of view? What, what, what drew you to, to do this particular course at this point? Um, I was drawn to it during uh, my previous study, which was the Diploma in Professional Legal Practice. I previously studied uh, psychology and then went into law. Um, but during the diploma, I kind of felt like there's just so much emphasis on court, funnily enough. <laughs> but, you know, I've just felt that parties and solicitors were very, very quick to jump to court proceedings and obviously very adversarial. Um, and that mediation was something that was touched upon. Um, but really, that was it. It was, it was a passing thought. Um, there just, I don't think there was enough time spent on it, particularly in certain subjects like employment law and family law um, and I thought surely there could we could save so much time expense heartache stress if there's so much I think that could be sorted out um, through a conversation in a safe and non-confrontational environment, if you've got somebody else there to help facilitate that between two parties who may be completely right. broken down. Um, so I kind of went looking for something and found this course. Um, and yeah, I, I honestly felt like it would, I would be doing a disservice to clients if I was a solicitor and had not had additional training um, right. in ADR. I did think that I wouldn't be the best solicitor I could be. Mm. I wasn't able to help them communicate or at least think about alternative ways of reaching a resolution or than just being like, let's go to court. <laughs> That's, thank you. That was a re really interesting perspective um, to bring to, to Legal study. Uh, so, I mean, I'll, I'll do it in the same order, Sasha, from your point of view, then what, what's been the most challenging thing about taking this? I mean, that's you, so effectively, you're telling us you've done, presumably, a degree, then postgraduate study, and then more postgraduate study. Uh, yeah. What's been the most challenging thing about this one? Well, funnily enough, even though I've done previous study, um, 
I'm not I'm not very good at um like if I'm having I'm the type of person who's if I'm having a bad day I'll just like keep to myself and I don't have a problem academically but I'll just kind of keep to myself and work away and you can't do that on this course <laughs> it will drag you out of your comfort zone um and particularly like far said the intensive weekends you know they are intensive um and you're thrown in the deep end with the role plays and I don't know what it would be like with an actual class situation, but on Zoom, you know, there's nowhere to hide. <laughs> you're put into breakout rooms and you're there with that person or persons and you have to speak or it's going to be very uncomfortable. So um, that to start with was really quite, that was unnerving for me. Um, but it was also great because I needed that. I, I absolutely needed that. And by the time the next intensive weekend came round, I enjoyed it so much more and I was so much better at it as well. Um, so I think it's really good at bringing out the best in you. Thanks. And Sasha, you, you're also maybe for students who are, uh, potential students who are watching, I think you're illustrating that um, there's more than one personality type can be a mediator. Yeah. And I think that's that's been actually something I've learned over the years that a very wide range of people seem to be able to adapt themselves um, and and actually function in that role. So I say that as an encouragement that it's it's not all kind of extroverts yeah. <laughs> necessarily, um, and and different types can can get a lot out of it. And for you, what what's been the, what's been the best thing about it? Um. There, there really is so much. I was having a good think about this and there is so much um, that the course has brung. Um, it, has, it kind of, I thought, well, that's cheesy, but it has exceeded expectations. Um, but I think the additional opportunities it continues to bring, um, like my emails are forever, not too much, <laughs> but they're, they're always pinging, you know, with like additional things that we can take part in. Um, additional CPD opportunities uh, with the mediation services in the sheriff courts. That's something I, I didn't expect, and I, you know, I thought that was brilliant when I first saw that. And then there was more than one, and I just thought that that's absolutely great, and it's so interesting. Um, you don't just you get to mix with the people in the course, but then you also meet so many other people. Um, and these training opportunities. Um, next week, I've signed up to do the mock housing mediation practice uh, to prepare for the clinic's housing mediation project. Mm -hmm. And that's an opportunity that I'm really excited about. Um, Me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, things like that. There's just new things popping up all the time. Um, and the clinic's been fantastic taking part in the mediation clinic. That's been really great. And like Barry says, actually training you to mediate. Um, great. Well, look, thank you. Thanks, Sasha and, and Farid as well for, for sharing your experience. So I think.